Hi, I'm Abby, the Senior Volunteer Coordinator from Equal Lives, and I'm here today to talk to you about accessible volunteering. There's a resource pack I've created, which I've shared with Amelia, and she'll share with you after this. Um, you're also welcome to have my email address, and if there's any follow-on questions from this presentation, please do feel free to email me. Um, I'm also happy to set up team meetings with people if you'd like to discuss anything that I've brought up here today. Uh, I do have a bit of a cold, so apologies for, um, for that, for the slightly bad pronunciation on some things, but I hope that you find this helpful. Thanks very much and enjoy. Inclusivity. Diversity and inclusion are about giving value to every human being, no matter our differences. If you create an inclusive culture, diversity will come as people will naturally want to be a part of what you've created. So why should we aim to be more inclusive? Different people can bring a lot of energy and a new perspective to your organisation. We can improve our knowledge of how to appeal to disabled service users. The more inclusive we are, the more it ensures that we're representing the entire community. It improves our public appeal and counts us all in as an organisation who care about and value the opinions and the identities of individuals, of disabled individuals. It gives us a bigger pool of people to recruit our volunteers from and the averages back it up. So disabled people are on average less likely to have time off sick and have less workplace accidents than non-disabled people. So how can we make it easy for people to volunteer with us? You can become a disability confident employer. There's lots of information on the HMRC website about how to do this. And this shows disabled people that you care about them and you value, value them as an individual. Make it clear that you're adaptable by showing that you'll make any necessary adjustments to accommodate their needs. Microsoft are a brilliant example of this. So they realised they weren't taking on anybody with autism. And so they did away with their recruitment process and worked with an autistic charity specifically to set up a different kind of hiring process. Make your website disability friendly. There are lots of ways that you can do this. And I'll go into some detail about what we've done a little later on in this presentation. Make the route to application an easy one. So use simple one click buttons, offer online applications with paper ones available if needed. Use a contrast checker to make sure that people with visual impairments or color blindness are actually able to see the text. Um, I've recommended one in the additional resources pack, which will be shared with you later. Simplify roles if necessary. So is it possible for you to have an abridged version of your volunteer role? Is it possible that you can adapt the roles to suit the capabilities of the volunteers who want to come on board with you? Could you split the roles up into several smaller roles? Ensure the criteria isn't creating a roadblock. So think about how the criteria of your advert could be excluding people and creating unnecessary barriers. For instance, if you put the volunteers need to be confident and outgoing, this is excluding anybody who has an issue with anxiety. Or if you've put that a driving license is essential, where actually taxis and public transport could do the job just as well. And there's even grants that some volunteers can get for those sorts of things. So there's something called the PTR challenge, which I recommend that you all do. Um, so what you're looking at is whether the things that you're asking for are reasonable. Uh, look at your job description and write either a P for preference, a T for tradition, or an R for requirement next to each one of the statements that you make about what you'd like from your volunteer. Only the ones with an R should stay. How are you perceived? So think about your websites, your social media, and any information on you on other websites, third party websites like Glassdoor. If people can't see diversity, they won't believe that it's a culture that they can thrive in. What do the language and the images say about how inclusive you are as an organization or a setup? Brand perception is important. Otherwise people might quite likely self deselect before you even put the job advertisement out. Celebrate your diversity publicly. 
So talk about the things that you're celebrating within your organisation, get involved in local events and champion diversity and inclusivity. Spotlight your success stories. Having a page in the volunteer area of your website or handbook which focuses on previous successes inspires confidence in future potential volunteers. And use positive action. This is when you specifically seek out a certain section of the community. So you've decided that you want to have more engagement with disabled volunteers. Why not approach places where you know disabled people would see your advertisement, local groups, charity notice boards, disabled public facilities, and so on. So what have we done at Equal Lives? Changes we've made to become more accessible. Equal Lives is a disability rights charity, and as such, people look to us to lead the way in making volunteering more accessible to those with additional needs or those who view themselves as having a difference. We're currently working on ways to make our website even more accessible, but right now, this is what we're doing with our digital resources. We have an accessibility toolbar on the website. The magazine is embedded on the website to make sure that it's easier for screen readers. And this change was actually made following, re uh, following feedback from our members. Our e-bulletins have all been adapted so that they're less colorful and easier to read. We always use old text on our graphics. We have a BSL website, a BSL video on the website introducing the organization. Um, we have accessible formats and accessible formats are always offered for surveys, application forms, and any other kind of paper-based form that needs to be filled out. We use an online training platform for our volunteers, which is disability friendly for GDPR and safeguarding training. Application forms are available in easy read. Um, two of our trustees are actually visually impaired, so it's really essential that we have good accessibility for all paper documents. Captions are always used on videos and meetings are always recorded and transcriptions are always made available. Workplace culture. Small changes necessary to some are always beneficial to all. At Equal Lives, we use the social model of disability to guide our framework. Those who are differently abled are disabled by society because our collective beliefs, structures and ways of living and working are not, do not currently take account of everyone's needs and circumstances. If each person's needs were met, fewer people would experience disability. Ableism is discrimination in favour of able-bodied people. Examples of ableism include throwaway comments. The state of the kitchen makes me feel so depressed. I feel so wired right now, it's like having ADHD. Oh, he's so dramatic, it's like he's bipolar or including some people automatically. Why don't we all take part in the park run as part of a work event? Or it could come in the form of publishing internal documents and forgetting to include accessibility measures. So how can we stop ableism? Make deliberate efforts not to leave anyone out. Make sure that we don't use throwaway comments that include statements about disabilities. And don't assume that because somebody has a disability, they're less capable of doing something. Adapted ERGs. Consider turning an existing employee resource group, also known as an ERG, into a group which welcomes volunteers. Or if you don't yet have an ERG, why not start one? An ERG is a voluntary group created to foster diversity within the workplace. They can be focused on anything from a lifestyle choice to an actual disability, to an interest in diversity. They can be as small or as large as you want and are a great way of bring, bringing people together and creating a space for change making. Changes for different stages, thinking without limitations. Often making the workplace accessible to those with disabilities goes beyond what we might normally think of. For instance, 
Can a volunteer move around easily? Can they communicate effectively? If their sense of touch, smell or taste is affected, what could we do about that? Can they see a whiteboard or would they know if something was too hot to touch? Could they have a learning difficulty which could make it difficult for them to absorb the information? Do they find being in the workplace emotionally overwhelming or is it in some way triggering? Before the interview, offer to send the questions to the volunteer before you have the interview. This gives them, gives them the chance to prepare their answers and helps them combat mental health issues such as anxiety. We give the candidate some idea of what we may cover in the interview. And if the interview is online, then ask people if they want the questions pasted into the text box as we ask them verbally. Offer to send the application form in other forms such as Braille, if needed, find out if the volunteer needs any assistance in communicating. Consider having drop-in sessions instead of interviews. Potential applicants can turn up, hear about different opportunities and talk to employees, managers and other volunteers about the role and the organisation. Assess your workplace and think about how accessible it is for people with mobility issues. Do a walk around your site, carrying out your day-to-day -day routine and think about whether a disabled person could carry out the same activities or the, whether there is something preventing them from doing this. Be flexible and adaptive. Move the location or the time of the interview to suit the volunteer's need. Go remote, if possible. See if the role can be adapted to allow the volunteer to work remotely during the interview. Ask the applicant if they have any additional needs which they need you to support them with whilst they volunteer. Obtain details of an emergency contact. We also take details of whether the applicant drives and if so, what their car registration is. This means that if for some reason they're rushed to hospital, we know which car is theirs in the car park. Take a more relaxed approach to their work. Ask whether set shifts or casual work is easier for them. For instance, if they don't need supervision and they're working remotely, could they work in the evening if this is a bit easier for them? Ask the applicant if they would need a carer to volunteer with them. If they do, consider if the carer needs to be DBS checked for the role and ensure that you've got some information about them as well. Be considerate with questions. There are certain situations where you can ask somebody about their disability, but this doesn't apply to all situations. We never have the full story, and that's okay, we don't need it. It's not for us to judge how disabled or how able someone is. Volunteers aren't under any obligation to disclose information to you about their personal life. Volunteers aren't under any obligation to disclose their personal information, but at the same time, you can't assume that just because you can't see the disability, it means they don't have one. Some people wear a hidden disability lanyard, but not everybody does. Be considerate and make allowances. Assess the individual, not the disability. Once accepted, do a risk assessment on site, considering any information you have on the individual's disability. Set up a clear chain of action for what happens if they can't attend a shift due to illness or are unwell during a shift. Who do they need to report it to? What do you need to do to assist in or support in some way, such as phoning an ambulance or notifying a family member? Create a PEEP, a personal emergency evacuation plan. This is a plan which is mandatory to be used for anyone with accessibility needs. Arrange a tour of the workplace for your new volunteer and ensure that your health and safety adjustments include a PEEP. If a buddy is needed for the evacuation, ensure the buddy is aware of this requirement. You can find templates online. Communicate who their main contact to the organisation is and introduce this person during the volunteer's induction. This person should be their mentor and should also be the person who's listed to help them in the PEEP. Order and set up and in any additional equipment they need. Book a longer induction time slot the normal to ensure that you give them as much time as they need to process all of the information. Be clear in your explanation about any role specific information and send any accompanying documents where possible, making sure documents are altered as needed. 
If the volunteer finds online meetings overwhelming or too much to cope with, offer an in-person meeting for training and inductions instead, ideally in the venue where they'll be volunteering. Offer flexible work shifts to suit them and adaptable break times that they can take if they need them. Find out what changes they might need to the work environment. Do they need somewhere quiet so they can focus? Do they need lights changing? Is there too much visual or auditory stimulation? Consider their COVID requirements. What do they feel comfortable with? What do they need to support them? Manage their expectations if they're going to be working publicly. Ensure you have the correct policies and procedures set up to support them. For example, health and safety and loan working. Set clear boundaries about when you are available to support them and how often you'll check in with them if they're going to be working remotely. Create a clear action plan with them about how to manage their condition whilst volunteering. We use an accessibility passport, which guides a discussion between the volunteer and their main point of contact. Good communication. Ensure the volunteer knows that they can attend health appointments just so long as they give you advance notice and communicate clearly. Commencing volunteering. Ensure you have all adapted equipment and assistive technology ready and available for the volunteer's first shift. This includes aspects such as making sure the volunteer's desk is close to the toilet or exit if this is something that they need. Assistive technology includes using devices and software with speech recognition, braille keyboards or displays, color coded keywords, keyboards, screen reader software, assistive listening devices, and sign language apps. Adapted equipment includes height adjustable desks, buttons and lifts, automatic doors, portable induction loops for hearing aids, and braille documents. Disclose information if the volunteer has agreed to this and is comfortable with this. This will help make sure all staff know what to do in an emergency. Check all staff are up to date with disability equality training. We have created our own disability equality training and we run workshops, um, which I'll talk more about in a bit. Maintain a structured work routine if this was communicated with your volunteer as the way of working during their interview. Have a clear process in place for all of the work which will be carried out and stick to it as much as possible. Communicate any changes ahead of time so that the volunteer has plenty of notice. Make sure all staff aware are aware of how to effectively communicate with the volunteer. For instance, not using abstract or hypothetical language or speaking in a way which could be taken literally if the volunteer is on the spectrum. Ensure all meetings and training are recorded and can be, be easily accessed after. Offer mentoring if this is within your organization's capacity, as this will help the volunteer as this will help provide the volunteer with someone they can rely on and it will also build their confidence whilst they're in the role. Check the volunteer is not overstimulated. If this is a trigger for them, this can be navigated by providing noise cancelling headphones, providing a meditation station within the workplace, encouraging more frequent breaks or having some kind of a nature corner. Constantly focus on health and well-being and see what steps you can take to make accessibility and being proactive part of your company culture. For instance, keeping assistive, assistive technology up to date, educating employees on disabilities and changes in the disability community. If the volunteer has an absence due to their disability, record this separately to their just having time off sick or for other reasons. When you come to review the volunteer, disability related absences shouldn't form a part of the review, other than to inform a conversation about whether you can provide more support to them. Disability equality training. We've created a disability equality training package, which we run in house and outsource to other organisations. This training has been designed to allow those attending the course to reflect on the representation of disabled people across society. From the definitions in place, the language that's used to describe disabled people, how the media represents disabled people and the models that have been created over the decades, which reframe how we view disabled people in society. The training also puts into place a social model of disability. These are the three objectives. 
And these are the topics that we cover. For more information, just use the email below. So to summarize, it's important to remember that there is no end goal. We're always listening and we're always improving and we will get things wrong. I guess the culture of an organization plays a huge role. So try to ensure that you create an inclusive culture. It's going to be challenging. I can't stress enough that you won't always get it right, but be open to feedback, drive the conversation forward and create a feedback loop. The feedback won't always be good, but be willing to hear it and be willing to think about how you can use it to action and change. You can create an inclusive organization and an offer that fits everyone. It isn't a one size fits all, but we can find a way for everyone to fit in. Good luck and feel free to email me if you have any follow up questions. And you can also connect with us on social media. Thanks very much.